everybody. Welcome to another episode of Sip, sip and share. share. Sip, sip, sip and share. share. Let's go. Sip and share. Sip, sip and share. All right. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, baby. So what you drinking on? Over I am today? drinking just a simple cup of coffee. How about yourself? I am drinking a simple cup of mushroom coffee. <laughs> Man, where do you think they grow them uh, mushroom coffee beans at? First of all, it's not mushroom coffee beans. Exactly. <laughs> so it is different um, different mushrooms like um, Changa, I think, Lion, um, different ones. I'll have to tell you guys they, next time. They, it's different. It's, it is, it's different. It's I like know, a powder. I know, it's I like know. a powder. I'm, I was about to say, mushrooms just substitute for everything. You got... Oyster mushrooms, lion mushrooms mm-hmm. that taste like steak, and oyster mushrooms taste like oysters. Portobello. Portobellas. No, oyster got. mushrooms can taste like chicken. I haven't. And then there's one. Oh God, I forgot. It's it's like a it's circular, and that one can taste like seafood, like scallops and stuff like that. You know, I, was, I forgot the one. What it's called? <laughs> mushroom coffee. Everything. Mushroom. Everything. You know, I was watching something one day. I forgot what it was. Oh, I know. It was the show we was watching on Netflix, The Twin Experiment or something like that. And one of the guys on there said, you know why they're trying to make all this stuff um, taste like meat? Because meat tastes good. <laughs> so. Yeah, but let's talk about that for a minute. All right. And it goes in line with our subject today. So we're getting y'all there. Um, so right now, a lot of people are advocate, advocating for plant-based yes. diets. Now, I do want to say this, which um, there's this young lady, Tony Mitchell, on YouTube. T-O-N-I. And, and she said that uh, the, she was basically talking about why she went vegan. And I love the fact that she said some people are plant-based, not vegan, because vegan is a lifestyle, y'all. It's like I will do nothing animal product, mm. meaning my deodorant, my uh, body wash, all of the products that I use for myself, all of the products that I wear, what I consume in my diet, everything. And I think that some people are calling themselves vegan just because of the fact that they have no animal products that they're eating. See, we're about to turn this podcast into a whole different podcast, which is okay. It's going to tie in. But you're educating people out there, me included. So you got plant-based, you got vegans, and you got vegetarians. Yeah. You got... uh I almost say it almost sound like a religion. Me eater, <laughs> pescatarian. Pescatarian. Right? They're all different things. Just so yeah. you know. And so based on her journey, which I have been kind of following along with her own, I'm not necessarily taking the journey. Oh, From what I understand, pescatarians are the ones that eat seafood. Yes. Yes, they eat seafood, and they also still eat some animal products. I.e. butter. It might have okay. milk in it um, or cheese or something like that. From okay. my understanding, unless my daughter is doing it wrong, pescatarian is the meat is your seafood and the other items are vegetables, but you still might do eggs or um, dairy products, things like that. Okay. All and right. you got you got the, the vegans. The no, vegans. let's go vegetarian next. Okay. You got vegetarian it. would be next that means i have given up all sources of meat, meat that come from an animal so i'm eating all plants but i still might have the cheese and the milk um the eggs the the, the prod some of the animal products okay uh, so they're not doing necessarily they're not looking at the sour cream to say oh it got milk can't eat that. They're getting it. Okay. Um, you, you see what I'm saying? Okay. All right. We talked about pescatarians. We talked about... Vegan. Vegans. I mean, vegetarians. Veg- vegetarians. Sorry. What's a vegan then? Okay. So, ve- no, I think it would be what Tony said. The next step would be plant-based. plant-based diet. Plant-based diet um, basically means I am not doing anything animal product. That means I'm starting to check the back of those things and making sure there's no dairy, there's no egg, there's nothing that is coming from an animal in any product, my mayo, my milk, my whatever, any product that goes inside my body is from plants only. Now we're going to go to vegans. 
that takes it up to a whole nother level meaning that I ain't wearing nothing that coats. goes in my body is animal or on nothing my body. on my body is animal nothing I wear is animal my sofa ain't animal my car ain't animal nothing I'm an advocate for cons- conservation of our animal our livestock our you know I respect hey I respect all of it I respect the all animals. of it. I respect all of it. I just want everybody to know there's different levels, different variations, which actually ties us into our subject today. Have you ever had something sitting in the fridge and you're just like, man, I can't wait to come back and eat that? Or maybe sitting on the counter, but like, I ain't going to eat it all, but I can't wait to come back and eat that. Only to find out that somebody ate it before you did. And the reason it ties in is because as I have been walking with you on our journey, um, there are some things that you have been making that have been plant-based, vegan, whatever title you want to put on it, that actually have been very, very, very tasty. But you won't have to worry as much. You don't have to worry as much about me coming behind you eating something that you had saved for later. But I have to worry about it. There was one time, very recently, that I had some candy, some chocolate, in a Ziploc bag, in the cabinet. <laughs> And I said, you know what? <laughs> she because she ate all hers. He didn't know. Uh, 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 uh. He didn't you, know. you ate all yours. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna come back and get this later. You know, it took about two days because I wasn't ready for it. By the time I was ready for it, you know how a little kid when somebody else done ate all their stuff and be like, I still got my I went in there and picked up my Ziploc bag and I was like, this thing feel a little light, you know? <laughs> so I kind of went to her, I was like, Did you eat some more chocolate? No, you didn't. You did not ask. <laughs> You didn't ask. I, I made a you, statement. You just said, I made a statement. Dang, I said, this feel a light. I could have sworn, I had, I sworn I had more than this. Yeah, you didn't ask. And me. you didn't even respond. Nope. And, I was and, doing work. And then I think it was probably about a night or two later, it was just out of the blue. I ate some of your chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so so let, me, let me say this to the people. All right. So <laughs> part of my journey has to be, I, I'm trying to cut down on sweets especially added sugars and a lot of things that we get approved in the united states guys it's not approved in other countries um like the caramel color the yellow yellow fives fives and stuff like that so i'm trying to make sure we don't have those things in our house so but we do have what we call our cheat day or cheat day and a half um where we can have something that we may have been wanting well, I'm being a nice wife. I'm at Whole Foods. And so I was like, I'm going to get this chocolate candy bar. Half will be mine and half will be his for the weekend. Sounds like a good plan so far. And it is good, y'all. It's called Tony's Sea Salt Caramel. Man, that, that thing tastes good, Lord Jesus. And so um, so I said, babe, here's your half. Here's my half. So far, the plan still sounds good. Yes, <laughs> it sounds good. So, um... Yeah, um, so I had ate mine, and um, he was gone somewhere, and I was like, oh, he's still up there. And I think, you know, it's that time of month stuff, and you know, like women just, you just crave something sweet sometimes. And so I just took like a corner, but a little bit more came off, but um, <laughs> <laughs> and I ate it, and I didn't think he was going to know about it. And honestly, wow. I don't think he would have known. I don't think he would have known. I, I picked up the bag. It's like, you're a little short on my chocolate. But, you know, again, that's what I kept saying. The plan sounds good so far. Nice gesture to be at the store and be like, oh, I'm going to get this. Get half. Okay. Sounds good to me. You get home. You break it off. Half. Still sounds good. But your plan didn't come to fruition because <laughs> you ate your half plus some of mine. But the thing is, babe, I really think you were holding on to that candy bar to entice me. It just felt like you were holding on to it to entice what? me because I gave it to you and you were like, I ain't going to eat mine right now. And I'm like, you're trying to be that kid that's like, and eh, then boo boo, I got this or whatever. Are you that easily influenced? <laughs> I mean, but, if that was the babe, case. Let's, let's just be honest though now. You can't say you don't do the same thing to me. It doesn't matter that I'm eating differently. Name it. it my salmon, salmon Name and hash. It. What about My it? salmon and hash. You gave it to me. No. We were at a restaurant, so here's the deal. It don't even have to be your leftovers, y'all. Now, it hurts when it's those leftovers, but I ain't going to lie. 
when that night, one night I cooked portobello mushrooms. I'm going to go back to the hash. One night I cooked portobello mushrooms. And I was like, okay, we can eat this, this night and tomorrow night. And you went back for seconds. So that's kind of like taking my meal because no, I'm like, God, now I got to cook. That's not the same thing. Now I got to cook it again because you went back. That's not the same thing. That was something that was dedicated and obligated to me. And you went and got my portion. Okay. That's different. Well, okay. So we're at a restaurant and I had this salmon um with uh on top of a bed of like fried hash it was like creole or, yummy or i didn't yum, yum. i don't i didn't like it and I'll, I'll tell y'all why I, oh I so don't. you didn't so you didn't like it no i didn't okay oh keep well keep going, keep going, i, keep I ultimately didn't like it keep you going. didn't know that at keep first going, you didn't know that at keep first going. so when we got it or whatever he just kept digging in we taste each other food but like it's like unless we made a deal <laughs> like here's the thing if we're at the table, oftentimes I'll be like, you get this and I'll get that. You know, I'm sure a lot of couples do that so that you can like half it and then like be like, okay, you got some of this. You got the waffle and I got the shrimp and grits or something. And we have so that we have sweet and savory or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, this time we did not make that deal. Y'all, he got this waffle with fried chicken wings and all that mess. And I got this salmon hash thing. We had no deal in play. But we still allow each other to taste one another's food. I did a taste of his. Oh, yeah, baby, that tastes pretty good. He did a taste of mine. Next thing you know, he did a taste of mine. Next thing you know, he did a taste of mine. We get home. I'm putting stuff in the refrigerator. Oh, yeah, I got this salmon to eat later, too. You know you had claimed it. I said, babe, that's mine. I don't remember you saying did. that. At I said all. I had to say, babe, that's mine. I did. I don't remember saying that, but if I did say that, continue. Yeah, but ultimately I gave it to you because I the, so here's here's you, you did what? I ended up giving you it to you. You gave it to me. Because you didn't sneak and get it when it was sitting up somewhere. You didn't sneak and get it and then pretend that you didn't eat it. You gave it to me. I but at the restaurant I wasn't trying to give it to you, but you just kept creeping over. Y'all ever seen a fort just keep, and you like and then on top of that, I mean, he was having uh, remnants of like your your thing that you was eating on the fork. I'm like, come on now, bro. But you didn't. But you didn't like it, so. Yeah, I, here's the thing: if you guys watch that Netflix special where they do this twin experiment, one of them eats meat, and then one of them eats a plant based diet. Yep. Um, there's a lot of good science um, into that. Uh, they tested both of them. Um, there's this thing, guys. I, I just want to say this right now. Y'all be careful how y'all are eating because mm. you could be skinny as I don't know what, but if you're eating bad, there's this thing called visceral, visceral fat. Visceral fat. And it's it can the go fat around between your, your organs. organs. And that's that's the heart attacks. And that's the stuff that kills us, y'all. And it's not as so, vis- it's not as visible. Yeah, it's not visible. So um it the plant based person, boy, they drop. And this was only like six, eight weeks that they did the mm-hmm. experiment. But ultimately, while they're working with the individuals, they're showing you like um, cow farms, pig farms, chicken farms, um, seafood farms, all of this. Right. So one thing that I learned is farm raised. Nah, you don't want that. You don't want that. And wild caught is what you want when it Wait, comes to you. Ha- you have to be specific. Okay. When it comes to seafood, when it comes to seafood, because you, you do want farm way raised beef. Y- yes, but y'all, you, I really almost want to just talk about that because <laughs> our animals are not being raised properly. There was a chicken farmer on there who basically said, "I, I, ain't, I won't eat that chicken." I went and he shut his hole. He got so disgusted with it. He ended up shutting his hole because the company would um, like what lease him to for his land and for his uh, helpers to raise these chickens. And y'all, if you saw how the chickens were raised, they are in all of these like big old silo barns. And he said the room that they had. Uh, the one chicken only had enough room that was about as big as a sheet of paper. Mm-hmm. So they're stacked in there on top of each other. Y'all, they are stacked in there. And so th- actually the, the, the sheet of the paper space that they had was actually good compared to what the standards were because they had a lot less room to move about 
you know, than the other chicken. So when they say cage free, cage free meant they had enough space to move around that's about the size of a sheet of paper. And that was supposed to be advertised as a good thing. So if it wasn't caged free, they're even closer together. So anyway, I don't want to get too much into yeah, it. Yeah, I don't but- want to get into it. Y'all go to the Netflix thing. So one thing that I learned, so when we were going out to these restaurants and things and I'm looking at the salmon, you can tell it looks totally different. Mm-hmm. And then we watched a video with another guy who showed a farm raised versus a wild caught. We are going to get so many more nutrients and better um, things put in our body by getting getting our things naturally as they are produced and and working throughout nature but when man tries to reproduce yeah that's when it goes wrong yeah this is this conversation kind of you know it's really just all about food in general but i will just yeah. say don't eat your spouse or your significant other's food that they have saved for themselves whether it's wild caught farm raised doesn't matter if it's their food it's their food unless they Give it to you. And don't be like, you know, to the other extreme. I had to live with this all my life. You know, my daughter, when she was young, I had this two liter bottle of Coca-Cola. You know how Coca-Cola looks in a clear bottle. It's nice and dark and you're just like, oh, that soda looks so good in there. And then, I don't know, over time, it just seems like the bottle just kept getting lighter and lighter and lighter in color. But the the amount that was in there was about the same. So I got to pour it one day and it pretty much about tasted like water. So she had been drinking my soda and then replacing it with water to fill it back up. That's what I'm talking about. Don't so, take each other's food, man. What's for you is for you. Yeah, you should be drinking Coke either way. But they, my children, they were not raised on sodas, but he would occasionally have a soda in the house or something. So I guess she just got desperate and wanted her a little bit of that. I ain't got nothing else to talk about because you might mess around and try to drink my coffee before this episode. I'm not. I'm not. I don't so. drink caffeine. So, well, this got 50% of what that is. But but anyway, guys, we hope you learned something today. We were supposed to stay strictly on the topic of eating each other's food. But some kind of way, this is what was brought to our attention to tell you a little bit about what we've learned about food. Absolutely. Um, and no matter what, whatever food journey you're on, I got this from Tabitha Brown. Hey, don't force it on anybody else. Do it for yourself. I always tell him, hey, baby, I could throw you on a piece of that uh, caged up chicken if you want me to or them old big old sloppy pig. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but no, seriously, I do tell him, hey, I can throw you on some meat. And, I, you know, we have this. You have my stuff for a side. But he has been loving it. So, um, you know, if you're on a different food journey, just respect each other and what each other wants to have and eat. But I will ask each and every one of you, one, be mindful of what you're putting into your body and two, be mindful of other people's food. Absolutely. All right, y'all. Until next time, unsip and share what you want to talk about, but not your leftovers. Oh, well, I shouldn't have gave you mine. (laughs)